Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Today is Saturday. It's Sabbath day. I have to confess, I drinking too much, party too much. <laughs> Especially last night, I defended the Playboy party and the Skybox pin party. It's awesome. And so, if anything goes good, I love it because of those parties. If anything goes bad. Just blame those alcohol residues. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a regular researcher from Eye Defense, and uh, starts like a couple years ago. Uh, I heard about some kind of PLA hacking, Pentagon was uh, penetrated, those kind of story, and uh, bring me a couple questions because uh, they talk about uh, three terabyte data was uh, taken. In two months period, and the, I was thinking, can those guys do like math? Can those guys like、uh, have some common sense on the forensics? So since like、uh, the speaker was like Pentagon senior, so I think maybe something true. It's just curiosity. So I doing some of my own research. I love the internet. Internet is widely open, and I don't have to be a spy. I'm too smart to be a spy. And、uh, I just sit in my nice couch, drink my tea, have some snacks, and、uh, type a couple keywords. I'm running in Texas, in Oklahoma, in Colorado. It's kind of just like wild, wet, wild west. You free run. You are a cowboy, you know. And、uh, from one keyword search, we have this: a splendid story. Okay, let's back to my agenda. So the first we、uh, will talk about what、uh, we haven't seen. That's probably most people already know.、It. And、uh, another second, I will talk about my research methodology. And、uh, then we form a PLA information warfare timeline. Then from there, we have deduction and induction. Some facts in there. And from my own curiosity. Uh, my grandma always told me, "Curse to kill cats." <laughs> What the heck? I like it. <laughs> so, I have a one-step leap. So, bring up another big story. Okay, this is the timeline for PLA information warfare from 1997 to 2009, and、uh, it looks ugly. It is sometimes truth is ugly when you cut everything to piece. You know, just like Michael Jackson, the nose fall out, the air fall out. Just, it is ugly. <laughs> But <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and the, this ugly picture gonna come back for a couple times. So what Western Hemisphere is first we see Titan Ring. That's a cool name, and、uh, go Google go. Wiki, it's a larger scale of intrusion. In the last couple of years, Germany, UK, a couple of Western countries starts accusing PLA doing the hacking for the government sites, and they say they have evidence. Okay, I didn't find on online, but、uh, well, that's they said. And the, there is India National Laboratory. They have intrusion. And the couple human rights congress was crying about their box was hacked. And the couple DOD contractors like、uh, Raytheon and、uh, Lucky, whatever, whoever, you guys know, just you, you guys didn't tell the media, you know, you guys gonna lose contract. And the、uh, Pentagon, yeah, every day fourteen thousand times scan, three terabyte, whatever. And the Navy barracks. NASA, Indian government. It's interesting. And the, when we after we see this, we'll have a question: whether PLA did. So, based on this question, there is a yes or no. Some people just say very con confirmed PLA did. Some people ask question: how, why, when, what kind of method? Whether really PLA did, maybe this is deceive and deceptive. So, 
it's kind of like a set. It has a subset. It has attributes within it. You have to fulfill those criteria to make the statement true. So when, when you say PLA did, whether this relates to state sponsor, definitely PLA is a state unit. The entity must be they to do it. They did it. But not necessarily. Sometimes un, under their own will. So whether it's state sponsor, you still have to fulfill the set. All those attributes have to be true. So there is many gaps within it. And uh, it's beautiful digging, beautiful internet browsing. First, I found out uh, that's a PLA barracks. Soldier, they have the capability, physical infrastructure, they have everything. Provide for them, they can, do in the, they can browse on the internet. They can go through their barracks, go to everywhere. And uh, so they have the infrastructure, they have the capability. And this guy was a little hacker for five, six years. And right now he's in PLA, he's an armor police fireman. And he has the ability to do so. So, question before I start everything is whether they're under the order to do so. That's very important. Whether they did it just for fun, that's very important because it forms different conclusion. If a soldier with his uniform or a soldier without uniform, how to identify his status, that brings different conclusion. Several soldiers with uniform several without uniform. And I love US. Uh, you love uh, Cambodia. You love Romania. He loves China. The patriotism is the same. And uh, I got inference from CNN or ABC. You got an inference from Tokyo News. He got an inference from, I don't know, whatever news. It's the propaganda. Whatever we received, whatever we're we following, the same. And uh, so another thing is called acquaintance. Whatever we're doing, whatever we did, is whatever stay they under the acquaintance. Maybe they know. Maybe they just care less. Uh, I, that's from my perspective. Asymmetrical warfare is kind of like a card game. It's just like a card game because there is 52 cards in there. And the... Uh, which means like uh, whatever technology, whatever method, actually right now is limited. It's countable. So like uh, in, you know what's in your hand. Just like here, it's uh, just like a WW. You have your technology. You have your capability. You have your skill, everything. You have the sources. Everything in your hand, you know it. And uh, here, maybe it's China, maybe Russia, maybe Iran, whatever. They have uh, one card. And the... Uh, you think why they give these cards? What else possible in their hands? After Iran or Russia give their cards, you make a decision, what are you gonna do? And then you think probably this one, what kind of cards gonna give? So it's just mind game and uh, use limited sources. That's my perspective of, uh, of the search, internet browsing. I believe uh, a river rock could make a splendid but ugly New York City. Just like a one piece information, I start grab, start doing research on internet, start digging. And when I accumulate everything, I form a New York City. And the, when I spot the big cheetah, when I see the big cheetah, I really don't have to catch the cheetah. I only need just character his character, his special pattern to identify that's a cheetah. So that's our methodology says, we goes from micro to macro. We see everything from macro to micro. And uh, when we receive those information, when we see the events, we first identify them. We verify, have, we have a criteria to verify, and uh, we validate in our database and we organize them to form a conclusion. So all those criteria, we set the rules for consistency, for continuity, for 
it has to be carried by tangible entities. And uh, it has to be published because we are doing OSINT. So it uh, has to be published by undeniable published news. Even those news, the purpose is to deceive and deceive. Even those news came from some dumb reporter. Doesn't matter because it's a footprint. It's a footprint. There is something to generate this news, something in there. And uh, we use a cross-reference. That's very important, a three-triangulated tri cross-reference. So those conditions are end, the logic end condition. And the rules in there is you have to have time, time attributes in there, or location, or Unicode, or leader's name, or order's number, or designated function. It's just kind of like a machine learning. When we're writing program for machine learning, basically you don't have to fill all the attributes. You may be missing two, missing one, doesn't matter. It's all condition. Here's a little bit about uh, China PLA and their, their high aki. And uh, that's the National Party Congress. And uh, after that is a Central Committee. And uh, below this, it has a Central Military Commission, CMC. <clears throat> Under the CMC, no, the rest of just, you guys can go to like a .gov, any page. It's, it will educate you so well, you know. It's well documented. And uh, just police department, the foreign affair, whatever. It's just for Chinese, China.gov or US, you're doing the keyword search. And uh, in here we see the CMC has uh, four subsets. One is called general staff department. It's kind of like a brain. It organizes and the planning do all kinds of things. The second is called general political department. This department is kind of like a uh, like a cell, like uh, your body immune system, and uh, preventing soldiers from getting, goes to the bad side, thinking bad, and uh, encourage the moral, those kind of things. And uh, another called general uh, logistic department, basically you need to give them dress, give them food, and providing things for them in order for fight, to fight, right? And the general armament department, the weapon, the equipment, things. So that's a GSD, it's a function. It's a brain, organizing, leading, commanding, action, training, military affair, whatever, those just their function. <laughs> that's a PLA force structure. There is seven regions, north, east, northwest, and the Beijing region, and the east region, Nanjing, southeast, and the southwest. And uh, recently, they just reshuffled the cards, and uh, they it seems to change a couple of regions, mix with some and uh, reduce, I think reduce one or two. And the uh, Air Force, same, Navy, same. Second artillery, it's a missile unit. And the uh, ground force, they have uh, active soldier about uh, half a million. Armed police force, about uh, 1.5 million. And uh, militia, it's about uh, one million. Actually much more because uh, one general, military general, recently just said they can just call out uh, about 20 million soldiers, militia, 20 million good militia in 72 hours. That's the way, that's capability. So we recursively break down the infrastructure, the function, everything we can find out. There is a China People's Armed Police and the militia in there. And the militia are basically kind of like a National Guard or Reserve Union. And they attach to active PLA. They do something PLA cannot do, or PLA doesn't want to do whatever. It's just National Guard, you know, guarding the street or doing some airport job, something. Yeah. And the <clears throat> in here we can see the subordination relationship is CMC published the order, give the guidance, and the GSD, it provides management, right? And the PLA regional commander, they just execute the order to the city level, to APF, the armor police force. And after that, uh, GSD, they publish the training manual, training tasks. And uh, the regional PLA garrison, they execute those tasks. Those local, local city or local APF, they providing manpower, providing equipment under different authority. 
So timeline, and uh, that's my initial search because I uh, always like to back to the head first. So when I type in the keyword search, PLA, information warfare, whatever, it pops up first. 1997, they have a first PLA division staff, chief of staff training form. Uh, basically, they're learning from Kosovo. They discuss about it and uh, try to find the, what's, what China should do for the information warfare. They talk about hacking. That's the instant. They want to hack it. In uh, 1998, they formed the, f- the first official Net Militia Union. Please remember this word, Net Militia Union. And uh, this union has 40 professionals. Most are professors and PhDs. Most people were familiar in this book. If you're from West Point, from the IA, whatever, from the IC community, you're definitely familiar in this book. It was a cry louder for a while. And uh, it's called Unrestricted Warfare. The two writers, one is the Air Force Colonel, another is uh, Lieutenant Colonel, I think. I forgot, they get promoted. And the one retarded. And uh, retarded. And uh, <clears throat> this, two, this book basically, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Alcohol, 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 alcohol. <laughs> yeah. This book actually, uh, Copied or like a, use a lot of uh, theory and ideas from West, from the information world. So they have their own stuff, and uh, they actually inherited and learned from West. This is a very interesting guy. And uh, he wrote the first Trojan called YAI. And the uh, PLA is using it and still use it. It's called YAI, and uh, y'all guys can go like uh, online doing search about it. It's a really old Trojan. In the 1999, and the PLA starts thinking about the remote, remote access and the intrusion. And the, right after this, 2000 January, two PLA regions starts have a joint drill, and the purpose is Taiwan War. This general, his name is Xu Xiaoyan, and uh, he graduated, he got his, gra- his graduate degree from Canada, uh, forgot what, which university, but he's uh, really good for computer science. And uh, in 2000, he, 2000, he talked about uh, information warfare, and uh, he largely, oh, that's bad. In December 2000, the <laughs> general staff meeting, he talked about uh, unrestricted warfare. He largely quote words, phrase, or idea from unrestricted warfare. And the uh, president loved his talk. So he got promoted from a communication, a chief of a communication department, something, to a deputy commander of a PLA region. That's a big jump. In the <clears throat> August 2000, there is a first real drill deployed in China. And the, it's called the Militia Special Net War Training System for air defense. Please notice the red marked air defense. In the 2001, PLA invest 60 million yuan to build a base, information warfare base training those professors, doctors, professionals. There is 430 professionals in there. And uh, this guy is a professor in university. And uh, he's leading a couple of female militia, net militia groups. In uh, 2001, his proposal called Air Defense Emergency Alternative Plans was accepted by PLA. And uh, under this plan, there is a 60 masters and the professors work on it. 2002, two cities start to exchange and uh, study from each other about their experience, whatever, whatever they think. That's just experience exchange. 
2002, there is one unit, and uh, they tested, uh, it's called air defense mass switch. Basically, they adapt the air defense system, the military uh, uh, system with the civilian system, and uh, they testing the capability, testing the, their, like, uh, all the capability for the, for the whole system, air defense system. There is a southwest region, there is a 24-7, not 7-11, 24-7 militia, militia unit formed by professors and uh, PhDs. And uh, basically their task is doing the surveillance and the air defense and the quick response. They even build a, a platform so everyone has a laptop. They can, they can jump on the platform anytime, any Anywhere, 30 minutes, they can do it. To sound to a couple of PRO generals, they inspect different labs, the network offense and defense labs. Uh, to sound two, they, they invited a couple of civilian instructors, civilian hackers, and, uh, to teach them how to hack, and uh, use the Trojan called Glacia. It's very famous. Very famous, uh, famous one. I used it before too. <laughs> yeah. Let, so let's back to the ugly picture. That's all the events. All the events happens during that time period, and uh, you can see like it starts, uh, starts the book, starts talking, starts the book, and uh, starts the Taiwan drill, and. Uh, Starts some like uh, active drill and starts the Trojan and starts a training base. There is a promotion. There is a base right here and there is a couple university involvement. These are the net militia units and uh, those are the unit members. They pledge the loyalty to the party, to the PLA. And uh, there is selection, the criteria for those people. Is you have to be above 26, 25 to 26, and uh, below 45. And uh, some, some like, uh, there is some kind of order, that r really weird. You have to above uh, 1, 5, 3, 5, 5, 5, 5 feet, 6 inch, something like that. <laughs> just, just very interesting. They have a kind of criteria for this. And... Uh, that's the field, uh, field training and the field like, uh, inspection for those guys. You see the heavy box for that? See the heavy CRT for that? <laughs> I don't know. It's probably they don't have enough money to buy wireless. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so normally, normally those universities, those teachers following the uh, the category, the criteria they're being selected, you have to be PhD or graduate degree, you have to be maybe party member or 45 below, whatever. Based on this, in this picture, probably one third of them are NET militia. They had NET militia training. <clears throat> in, the, in 2003, PLA, Nanjing PLA region starts outsourcing, outsourcing their war commanding center to universities. And the, usually, like, a, you see, like, a we bomb manufacturer, we bomb air base, we bomb whatever military base, but we never bomb university. They put it in university. And the, those universities stay with the civilian residence area, so it's good, safe. In the 2003, some like a senior net militia, he's back to his uh, university to teach those junior guys how to use Trojans. In the in 2003, a couple stay on the enterprise. Uh, they starting act as wartime commanding center, just like we see. They put a commanding center in university, so you won't bomb it. That's the Lord's mercy. And uh, you put it in state-owned enterprise that's so big, and you can't just destroy so much. You can't destroy it. 
in 2003, end of 2003, they purchased the new equipment for network and uh, for, the, for the network offense and defense. They're doing a test. A couple regions start doing the joint test. In the 2003, there is an operation code name called Frontier Guard 230, and it's a joint operation. The purpose is for air defense, and Net Malaysia was heavily involved. <laughs> Starts 2004, they start to purchase new space surveillance and the radar system. Uh, 2004, GSD published order. The order give to most of the cities, uh, task them to form Net Militia unit. And it has a function, it has designation, it has task, whatever, drill related. It's just very clearly order. You need a Net Militia unit. And the uh, May, in the, they start universe institute called Air Defense Officer Institute. That's their badge. By end of 2004, uh, Guangzhou PRA, they start doing a special recruiting for computer science, PhDs, and the masters. And the PhD, the bonnet is 30,000 Chinese won, and the master is 20,000 Chinese won. And the GSD published the Net Malaysia performance review and appraisal. By end of 2004, they have a training and a drill integrated to the real war track. Okay, little stop right here. Uh, last time, actually, people asked me a question about why you like highlight or you put the, those air defense words like uh, seven times in the. Any, anyone recognize this one? Uh, go ahead. You have a question? That's one of our birds. It's a stealth bird. Chinese. Give me a second. And the, so you have your own indication, right? That's the indication. What's the purpose for air defense? Who are they going to defend for? Very clearly. That's their target, their intention. <clears throat> In the May, uh, April of 2005, there is a large-scale emergency order to form a national militia unit. Uh, uh, Net Malaysia Union. So that's, uh, I found out, a really weird uh, criteria. You have to be five, six, five feet six inches taller, and you have to look neat, and uh, whatever. It just seems like doing the show, you know, for a soldier. It's very interesting. It has to be all male, no female, something. That's criteria. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the mixed. Uh, the air defense uh, team and uh, some like a, I forgot, some kind of fiber related team. I just forgot that. Yeah, and the, they, in the same time, they start the intelligence units for information collection and the translation related multiple units. And, uh, oh, those, those are girls, translation or intelligence. Probably girls doing that better. And the, uh, PLA and the PAF starts recruit hackers, recruit good computer science people in different universities. That's back to a very interesting story. Uh, uh, anyone heard about the Jingwei? Okay. Uh, iDefense uh, developed a, a guy called uh, Wiki Rose. And uh, this guy was uh, was a at the beginning he was a regular hackers, and uh, regular hacker. And uh, but accidentally he win uh, the competition. He became the first class in PAF uh, network offense defense the the drill. So they sent him to intensive training, the boot camp, for one month to doing all kinds of like hands on training, and uh, he came back. And he get a paid, so he formed a team called called NCPH Network Crack Program Hacking, and uh, they released the rule kit called Jingwei. I'm 
I'm sure like a, some people just don't want to raise their hand and say you know it or you heard about it. But that's like it caused us a lot of problems. And the eye defense, tracing everything back, found out that that's him, that's his team, found out his box, everything. And uh, we published the whole story to the community. So after, after that, Times kind of followed him to where he lives and uh, exposed this guy too much. So PIA just think, uh, since you are exposed too much, we just dump you. So right now he's uh, back to university doing his uh, graduate study. But uh, in China, living is tough. So right now he's doing, doing the underground things. He's selling the credentials. He's uh, hacking the games, those online games. And uh, he has a really weird like a habit, those, those habits in his leisure time. As a male, you know, he likes dressing. He likes the cosmetic things. It's, it's really called a wiki rose. <laughs> yeah. In the 2005, end of 2005, there is national emergency drill structure. China integrate, integrate all the, the airport, uh, harbors, hospital, gas stations, surveillance system into the emergency drill. And uh, those telecom infrastructure was under it. In the 2006, May, there is an air defense drill and the exchange. Everybody l learning and experiencing it, and they're doing the exchange. So that's the, another picture. In here, seems like uh, not many activities for the hacking things. It's all like universities, recruitings, and uh, school related. Uh, end of 2006 starts a large-scale online psychological warfare against Taiwan. That's the inspection for Taiwan war. It said, uh, the first battle use me, and the all time use me, and the use me must win. That's they said. So that's the... Two thousand seven. Uh, Shanghai, it's a very westernized city in the air defense game. In the 2007, Wuhan, China's submarine base, a production base, was in the air defense game. In the 2007, Guangzhou PRA, they set 100 miles offshore for the net militia task. In the I ask myself, why they use 100 mile offshore as it's a reference? It's very interesting. Why you're not using like a 200 or 50? So you think about 100 miles offshore, what's the speed travel of the bomber? What's the speed of the missile? What's the speed of the net militia reaction time? So that's the number indicates. That's the Wuhan drill. That's uh, he's a PhD. He's leaning about the 30 guys under him. In 2007, PIA starts announcing a big news called uh, electronic uh, magnetic protection solution, and uh, one lady officer found out this solution. So they bring up a new concept, a complicated uh, EE, and uh, it's called CEE. They bring up this concept and they integrate into their practicing. Then it's interesting. We start from a network of hacking, and then suddenly we jump to tank, tank regiment. Just kind of jumping too much. Bear with me, follow me. And uh, if you're not following me, bear with me. <laughs> yeah. And the tank, as a tank regiment, to travel 1,000 miles. It takes a lot of logistic support, a lot of time, and uh, you can't get away from the satellite surveillance. It's just too much. And why it has to be 1,000 miles? That's another number. Just like say, why is 100 miles offshore? Why is 1,000 miles maneuver under the CE? So which means they have a long way to go, right? In the 2007, PLA starts purchasing purchasing uh, from, to, from West 
they start purchasing, free purchasing, use hackers to purchasing those uh, helicopter-related information. It's a 10-ton helicopter, so it's good for land combat. And the 2008, it's a Shenyang PLA, uh, PLA region. They have a drill. The drill, the purpose is use Trojan, Trojan to change logistic requirements and the data to cause confusion. And then EMP destroy the motherboard and the wireless function modules and the landlines. And the finally, radio stations. September, that's Guangzhou. They deploy a KS-1 missile with the Malaysia units. And that's the short range missile, 50 to 100 miles. And the second artillery battalion, uh, artillery, they have the largest drill in the history and they deploy the new network standard. Well, we jump everywhere. 35 satellites will cover the surrounding, China surrounding area. And we're back to tank again. And the tank regiment, they have a code name called the Frontline 2008. And uh, it's a live emanation under the CEE. Beginning of this year, China has South Sea Fleet, they have a drill under the CEE. So I'm use the blue word for the CEE. So in this stage, there's not much university involved. Those are the real practicing, real integration in there. Okay, let's see the small animation. The original starts from here. The two PI region, then they move to, move to the Chengdu, then move to Guiyang. That's the first stage is the red, second stage is blue, third stage is green. Can anybody like uh, form some kind of fuzzy sense about what they are doing for South Sea Flea, East Sea Flea? And uh, as, uh, as an industry, as business, like uh, we usually use a production developer stage. We're learning, we have uh, different stages. For, so first, we're doing the strategic planning stage, everything you're doing strategic state, uh, planning stage. So it meets, it's perfectly fits timeline one. And uh, after that, you have a research stage. That's timeline two. Production defined, that's stage three. Project management, timeline four. You're industrializing everything, timeline five. Implementation, timeline six. And dissemination, timeline se seven. And uh, you go to a new circle, prepare for CEE. So that's the, that's the spiral model for everything. Basically, you understand the requirements. You go to design a system. Then you build it in the stage. Then you test, evaluate, final release. And the, the following like a PPT I insert from my boss. And the Rick, he's a, he's a PPT, PowerPoint guru, you know. And the, I, I like it. It's, it's really good. And the, that's his credit. Okay. Why you love that lady? <laughs> okay. It starts in 1997. It starts here. They have a discussion. It's a pro, uh, rapid prototype. And uh, it's in the 2009. Okay, so starts 1997 here, 2009 here. In the first training, Kosovo discussion, it's understand, understand the requirement. Go to the rapid prototype, it's first net militia unit. Then, 99, first Trojan, understand requirement, that's net unstrict warfare. Why this guy there? Okay, just like a game, you understand all the requirements. You 
you understand this first, then you know the game. Otherwise, you're just yelling with everybody else. In the designer system, he gets promoted to the Nanjing region. He starts design the system. That's the Air Defense Institute. They build it into different stages. When they're doing the different unit test, psychological unit, warfare unit, that's the testing and the evaluation. Get back to the understand requirement again. It's wartime in command center design the system. That's they put into universities. And testing evaluation, that's called front front frontier guide two thirty, and that's the testing and the evaluation. perfectly fits each sector. He published a book called Military IT Principles. Wow, it's a little messed up. Okay, so final release, EMP. That's a final release. Uh, we can see the quick prototype, their target is Taiwan. And uh, the requirements in the second stage, the design, sta design the system in the third stage, building, building different units into the different operation, that's the stage four and a five, test six and a seven, and uh, release it, disseminate, it. and uh, research the CEE back to the initial focus. Fact list. And uh, I deduct from those informations, we see PLA is guiding and tasking the militia unit and the civilian companies. PLA has deployed large scale national cyber emergency drill. And uh, all activities are based on physical infrastructure cert. I will show you in the next slide. In the PLA information warfare, the focus was air defense. And recently, they shift to the operation under the CEE. And the, you can see those dots, like a first stage, second stage, third stage, is from inland to the coastline. It, you see personal involved, you see business involved, and the whole national, nationwide emergency drill. So it's from person to business to nationwide. It's called People's War. From civilian researcher to official orders, from land to ocean to space. Everybody see we're jumping everywhere from space to ocean to tank to network. And uh, from virtual, just a theory, just a, to tank to missile, that's a, from virtual to real. And uh, that's my conclusion. Taiwan was the initial issue and is, still will be. And uh, in here, PLA information warfare, the, the module is complete. And that, yeah, that's the CERNET map and uh, I'm talking about because I say everything is based on the CERNET. And uh, this is the China CERNET structure. And you see all the events. I put all the events into this map, you see. Perfect. It perfectly fit. They're practicing on this structure. Uh, it's a China Education and Research Net because that's uh, IPv6 is running on this net. Okay, uh, just just a little like a little curiosity make me forward a little bit because since Taiwan, Taiwan. It's close to us, right? And uh, so I'm doing a little more research from Taiwan Intelligence, those uh, assets. And I found out there is one thing called a head-off operation. 
That's the map shows. The yellow one shows the missile, the bombing area, and the air force, the airborne dropping area. The the gray one is the China second artillery cover zone. The red one is 72 hours U.S., Japan, and the Korea reaction zone, and that's the for the seventh flee, seventh flee for after the battle, and that's the South Sea China South Sea flee control zone. The this blue with the blue one, that's the China East Sea Fleet Control Zone. And uh, that's the landing, land force uh, land zone. And the, uh, oh, so that's the Taipei, Taipei City map. There is all the government, in, government uh, buildings in this area. That's perfect lands, all the missile will be there. Hey, I like, love internet, it's called Google search. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's called Taiwan War Head Off Operation. You guys can find out. It's, it's easy. Just type keyword. I explained earlier already that's Western, U.S., Japan, reaction time, missile cover. And uh, following just my own observation, and uh, I, I'm really like a love the curiosity, you know, it's bringing you so, so much, so much good things. And uh, most of my information just from internet, just internet, sitting on the couch, drinking and typing, find out. And 10% uh, maybe just talk to some reliable sources and uh, tell me some story. And the uh, following things, you may just, uh, you have to have some kind of character or to digest this, because like a uh, you have to have some kind of investigators, you know, special sense, very, very sharp sense to do it. And uh, when you think it, you put everything together, you have to have a kind of like a robot. That's what I'm doing, the AI, AI writing for a robot. The robot thinking, you have to fill all the slots and uh, doing machine learning things. And uh, you, you can't give up, you can't be a queer. You have to be a tank sable run, you have to penetrate, you have to all the way to the end. And uh, you have to serve or you have to like, treat those information like a Disney kitchen man. Basically, it doesn't matter where you came from, who you are, I'm serving you with a professional attitude, with a neutral, a neutral ground. So it takes passion, takes expertise, takes neutral thinking, takes effort, time to digest it. I found out that this information, <clears throat> they've been practicing 107 millimeter rockets. And the, same thing, why use one millimeter seven rock, uh, rockets? Why it is a battalion size? Why it's on the beach? It's just very normal question for a normal person, normal researchers. And uh, put everything together, find the principle, find the facts. That's the size of the one seven millimeter rocket. And to find out the land craft for China armies. And you see like this, the size, the capability, you calculate one battalion. And uh, when PLA is doing the simulation, they focus on the landing parts. Why are they not doing the jungle parts? Why are they love to doing the landing parts? It must be some kind of purpose for landing. And uh, they have diesel AIP. And uh, since, the, uh, if anyone remember, there was incidents happens. Uh, one China diesel submarine raised up really close to U.S. Uh, air aircraft carrier and uh, kind of like I uh, say, hi, Dom, just I'm here. And uh, those like a US submarine was like uh, really shocked. They penetrate their defense line. And uh, that's the good part of the diesel AIP. It's really quiet, you can't detect, hard to detect. And uh, it's cheap. So China increased the order to produce those submarines. Wuhan and Shanghai increased the order for the submarine. 30 kilometer anti-ship missile. So that fits, the perfectly fits the picture, the head off. Because when you measure the distance between the coastline to Taiwan uh, coastline, that's perfectly fits the zone. And the ship, whose ship in there? Wow, they're getting serious about after nuke action. And the, how many countries has these capabilities. And uh, how many countries will easily deploy the nuke 
in South Sea. And uh, they use uh, thousands, thousands of jets, bombers. And those, some jets are really old, uh, grandma level jets, and some are very fashion, fashion jets. They mix them together doing a deep inland combined drills. And uh, why they use those old like jets, really old, like grandma level, you know? And uh, what's the purpose? And uh, that's another, another province, they try to confiscate those uh, faked military tags. Uh, in China, military, there is a lot of uh, Toro on the highway. It's a really bad thing because like, uh, I can drive from east coast to west coast, I pay nothing. I drive from south to north, I pay nothing. But in China, the highway is kind of you have to pay every time. And the uh, military tag give you a privilege. You can go through those toll roads free and uh, quicker than everybody else. And uh, so those uh, smuggling people use uh, fake military tags mixed with a military convoy to get their, like, uh, save the money or can get some good stuff sneak in. And it will, basically, it will harm or damage the operation. So they take those tags away, catch them, and uh, keep their operation clean. Why put a YMAX on the top of Everest? I don't know. They want to help India or something, but I know they hate each other. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, if anybody remember, that's last year, there's the Indian government was crying about the Tian. Her uh, female hacker union was like uh, hacking the Indian government and uh, doing the deface and something. They did. They, they actually take some data from government, take from some financial institute, and I met her. She's, uh, she's not that good. Just not that skill set, not that dedicated, self-lover, and uh, has a big scar right here. Came, f- came from far- uh, countryside. Her, all, her parents are farmers. And she has no job right now. But she gets some money for travel. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 210. 210, by end of 210, China said they're going to deploy 35 satellites, and they will cover, and by next year, uh, 2011, they will have a space station. So let's check this. It's a map, and uh, that's the satellite cover zone from uh, here, east 70 to 140, north 5 to 55. So basically, it covers China and the some like um, uh, Philippines, Cambodian, and uh, South Sea. And uh, all the way cover Afghanistan. Wow, they're doing some free service for them or what? And uh, yeah. basically those 35 satellite covers. And uh, in here there is a pass you can access from Pakistan to China. In here there is pass. In here, Bangladesh, uh, there is a, it's called the McMahon line, whatever. I think China had, and uh, India had a big fight during that time, during like a 60 or 70, 60. And uh, here is the South Sea operation, East Sea operation, and uh, here is the YMAX on the Everest. Here is the military tag, fake military tag. That's the nuke operation. That's that's the, uh, what's the name? 107 rocket. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the China that they can deploy half a million soldiers and the 1,500 tanks and the 900 jets into that area really quick. See? That's the tank maneuver. We talk about the tank maneuver. 1,000 miles, that's the distance for 1,000 miles. So it's, if you're doing the, doing the cover zone, it covers basically... Uh, covers this area. Cover this area. That's another frontier 230 drill. They covers another maneuver. They covers this area. That's the EC flea. That's the Nanjing. Another uh, another drill. So you see the purpose of this is the focus is still by the coastline and. They have some kind of surveillance and protection in this area. 
I I just read the news like one couple of China generals talk about the China has no real war since like a 50 years ago with the U.S. and the soldier needs practicing. Wow, sounds really cold blooded. And the, by the military regulation, 2004, the Air Defense uh, University, the Institute of Soldier, they graduate, they will be O2 level, just like a lieutenant level. And uh, every four years, they get promoted. So from O2 to O5 or to O6, basically, you can calculate it's uh, about 220. And O5, uh, O6, they are the most backbone for military operation. And the U.S. Heritage Foundation research found out 2025 in Pacific area, China submarine and U.S. submarine, the number, the ratio will be five versus one. And uh, by 2020, China will have two aircraft carrier. And uh, it's another interesting issue, the imbalance between male and the female, because uh, some like a really bad tradition, they like boy, they don't like girls, so they kill girls. And uh, that's the bad. That's a bad consequence they have. They have extra 40 million bachelors by 2020. And the, can you imagine 40 million extra young boys, and the, they mostly live poor, without party like us. And the, what's the best solution for them? Waste them. So from now on, we're looking for another 10 years. That's my hypothesis. So if Taiwan war break out, then mostly China will face cyber-related, cyber propaganda, economic things, media, and whatever. It's like a do whatever we will do, whatever we can do. In the space, we're probably going to shut down those satellites. And we'll have regular airstrike, regular airborne landing, whatever, those things. And the, Ocean, we have a Pacific fleet in there, and uh, maybe we have uh, like a special task, land insertion or backstabbing from India. And uh, so, all the policies, all the movement China made starts making sense. It's counter the, all those operations, great firewall to against the propaganda, pen media penetration, and IPv6. CN rule. China was applying for the CN, CN as a route for so many years. Satellite quick launch. They can launch 12 satellites in 20 minutes. And the air defense, CE, more diesel submarine, satellite cover zone, deal with the Indian. Everything starts making sense. Uh, that's just my one step leap. Probably too much. And uh, that's I conclude, uh, I finished my today's speech. And uh, if you have any questions, we can answer by the launch. Thank you.